वेलकम बैक फ्रेंड्स टू द न्यू सेशन ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट सर्विंग वन माय सेल्फ नितिश और मोहिते वर्किंग एज एन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सिविल इंजीनियरिंग ऑफ भारतीय विद्यापीठ कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग कोल्हापुर एंड आई कंप्लीटेड माय मास्टर्स डिग्री इन इंजीनियरिंग इन सिविल स्ट्रक्चर्स ओके session we are going to uh, see the correspondingly next point of the unit number 6 of serving one that is nothing but correspondingly hydrographic survey okay so in that we will see uh, the introduction of the hydrographic surveying then what done by sounding okay then what is the purpose of sounding okay so we will see one by one so basically the hydrographic survey means what so which includes uh, correspondingly survey in which all the types of hydrological observations are been done so which are necessary for the design of the correspondingly hydraulic design of hydraulic or marine structures okay also for the said design of dams barrages and weirs and for cross drainage works okay correspondingly the hydrographic survey has been carried out also in order to have a knowledge of the amount of rainfall uh, which will be there in a particular catchment area then correspondingly in order to determine the discharge of the rivers okay so this hydrographic survey study is required okay also uh, if we go in detail then it is also required for the design of ports docks harbors lighthouses etc and location of hills and sandbars under the sea shoreline and tidal survey okay and uh, correspondingly and eco sounding are extremely important okay so as you can see here correspondingly you can see the what is the actual depth okay so how we can determine the correspondingly what is the observed depth and how we, uh, you are supposed to deal with the said hydrographic survey okay so what are the applications of hydrographic surveying okay we'll see so first one is nothing but as i told you in the said correspondingly dock design of dock and harbor engineering then in irrigation it is required then in the case of river works that is in order to determine what is the discharge of water in the river then land reclamation then water power flood control and sewage disposals so these are the various applications of the hydrographic surveying okay so dealing with from dock and harbor engineering up to the sewage disposal okay moving further okay what are the uses of hydrographic surveying then so in order to determine the depth of the bed correspondingly the hydrographic surveying is required then uh, with the help of this hydrographic surveying shorelines that can be determined then correspondingly in order to prepare the navigation chart okay hydrographic surveying is to be done then in order to locate the severe fall by measuring the direct currents you are supposed to do the correspondingly survey of hydrographic then locating mean sea level then scoring skilting and irregularities of the bed can be identified then tide measurement also can be done with the help of the hydrographic surveying river and stream discharge measurement 
massive structures like bridges dams harbors are planned by doing the hydrographic surveying so these are the various uses of the hydrographic surveying okay so the hydrographic survey basically includes the first one is nothing but rain gauging second one is the river gauging and third one is the marine survey okay so correspondingly in the rain gauging as we know that so in order to determine the amount of rainfall in the catchment area or uh, in a base area of a basin or a river okay so this rain gauging is been done so for that purpose correspondingly uh, simon's rain gauge okay or various types of rain gauges recording type available are available in the market or correspondingly with the government or automatic rain gauges are also there okay so which are been just installed okay at correspondingly uh, the catchment area okay and to get the proper rainfall records from the catchment area uh, the stations are been so selected that they may fully cover the basin okay and correspondingly such uh, rain gauge are actually provided uh, in the plain areas uh, for every 500 kilometers per squ per square kilometer and in the hilly areas okay so correspondingly at every 150 square kilometers the said rain gauges are been installed in order to get the proper uh, area uh, amount of rainfall okay so in order to determine correspondingly as i told you uh, amount of rainfall in the catchment area the rain gauging is been done that is dealing with the hydrographic survey then next one so uh, in the rain gauging we can determine any probable flood is going to come in the downstream area okay so directly we can correspondingly deal with that okay moving to the next point that is river gauging okay so moving to the next point that is uh, river gauging okay so so river gauging involves the measurement of discharge of a river and the establishment of a gauge post on one of its banks okay so this is done to directly read the highest flood level so that a warning may be given to the surrounding areas basically in the downstream areas for any precautionary measures to be taken whenever the flood is going to take place okay so in that case that river gauging is done under the hydrographic survey and last one is nothing but the marine survey okay so which involves correspondingly uh, in order to mark the shoreline at low and high tide then correspondingly the, in order to determine the depth of the water around the harbor then correspondingly in order to do the observations of current and tidal okay then nature of sea water okay in order to have uh, to take necessary precautions for safe movement of the ships okay and in order to prepare the maps uh, which indicates the position of submerged hills sandbars or any other obstructions in order to find out safe route the marine survey has been carried out under the said hydrographic survey okay moving further okay so now we will be seeing the main points that are required that is nothing but sounding okay so in general we can call it as measurement of depth of water that is nothing but sounding so the process of determining the depth below water surface is called as sounding so as i told you in general we can call it as in order to determine the measurement of depth of water this is nothing but the sounding so the step before undergoing a sounding is determining the mean sea level okay so basically uh, before doing the sounding process we should know what is the correspondingly mean sea level that is msl so the depth, depth of sounding is referred to the water level at the time it is made okay so correspondingly at the time of determining the depth that sounding has been referred to the water level okay the reduced level of any point of a water body is determined by subtracting the sounding from mean sea level so which uh, which it is analogous to the leveling so basically rl <coughs> in order to determine the rl okay so what is the mean sea level so with respect to that the subtraction is been done uh, so which we get what is the depth of the said water body 
okay at that particular position and a number of benchmarks are been established at frequent intervals along the shorelines and gauges and corresponding gauges are set on them okay so gauges are nothing but corresponding in order to determine the particular level at various levels okay at various positions okay and in a correspondingly they are being installed along the shorelines okay so what is the purpose of sounding so in order to prepare the accurate charts for navigation the sounding has been done then in order to determine the correspondingly quantities of material to be filled then in order to obtain information for design of breakwaters sea levels so this is required in correspondingly construction of docks and harbors then material that to be dredged has to be determined early to facilitate easy movement in project without any confusion that is any dredging uh, equipment is there which is supposed to move in that water okay so in that case in order to remove that material so this is required then uh, material dredging should be also a company a company where filling has to be done okay so material dumping is also been measured <coughs> Uh, by making of the sounding process okay so here you can see this is nothing but the shoreline okay uh, this is the sounding point this is the range line okay so this range line is nothing but they are perpendicular to the shorelines so which are used for locating the correspondingly buoys okay so correspondingly you might have seen certain uh, freely floating objects are there okay which is which are made up of either plastic or correspondingly uh, material which are just floating over that okay and uh, th that are nothing but here sounding points so in order to get correspondingly uh, a rough idea in order to enter it in the dock and harbor so that is nothing but corresponding range line and sounding points so these range lines are perpendicular to the shore lines okay so that was regarding the starting part of the hydrographic survey in which we have seen correspondingly what do you mean by hydrographic surveying what are the applications uses okay uh, what does it include like rain gauging river gauging what is the importance of marine survey and what do you mean by sounding okay so in the next lecture okay we will see how we are going to major actually the said depth of the water by using various methods or and corresponding what are the instruments required for determining the depth of the water okay thank you